And she's saying you'll be famous. All right. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit tonight, or possibly a lot tonight, about the, about the ongoing corporate takeover of our democracy. And in particular, we're going to talk about Walmart and the move of Walmart into the grocery area or arena. Uh, we've got some people here tonight. They're going to talk about the, the, the move for uh, Walmart to open up a grocery store at the old G.I. Joe's, which is, I think, out near the Fred Meyer on McLaughlin. And we have as guests Tom Civiletti. Folks probably recognize Tom Civiletti for, from his days on a TV set with Jim Rathall and Susan Sean. And who she's also she's the one that got a hold of me to uh, to talk about this. And then we have I don't have my note. Bob Marshall. Bob Marshall, right? United Food and Commercial United Commercial. Food and, and right. You're with you're, you're going to bring in the union perspective. Yes. So uh, we'll we'll let Susan talk a little bit about this to begin with, and uh, just kind of launch us off into the into the uh, discussion. And then we'll have a lot to talk about because this is this is uh, this is an ongoing issue with. Uh, communities across the country and uh, there's 15 I believe of these grocery stores that are being pro proposed for this area so uh, we'll let Susan talk a little bit about this. Good thank you I um, was excited when I saw your name and what you do on Facebook and I think I got in touch with you by sending you a message so all right well Facebook's got issues about it but that's it's such right. a good it, organizing it tool. It worked so um, sure. thank you for having us here oh, this hey, evening. You're welcome. Um, for people who don't know um, Oak Grove is on the east side of the Willamette River. We're south of Portland, we're south of Selwood, and we're actually south of Milwaukee. So we're in between Milwaukee and Gladstone. Oregon on the, City. There. On the east. Well, yeah, Gladstone is north of Oregon City. So yeah, so we're kind of in the middle there. And um, McLaughlin Boulevard is 99E. So that runs right through our neighborhood and uh, divides us kind of north-south. Um, a, a little bit towards the north end uh, was a G.I. Joe store, and about a year and a half ago, I th or maybe two by now. It's been a while, yeah. They, they moved out, so there's this, an empty store. Um, to, to give you a context, though, there are a lot of empty stores on McLaughlin. It's not the only one, um, but it's a big store, and it's empty there. And um, As I understand it, uh, Walmart has purchased that store, and their intention is to um, uh, uh, remodel it uh, somewhat and build a, uh, gross, a small grocery store. So this is not one of those big box stores. This is a small grocery store, has a pharmacy included with it. And um, uh, that um, is uh, the, a new business model is, uh, for, for Walmart. So they're not focusing so much in our area with the big boxes, but they're coming in with a zillion of these little grocery stores. Uh, so that's what we're, we're fighting. We heard about it through our, uh, what would be like a Portland Neighborhood Association. We call them CPOs where we live, citizen mm -hmm. planning organizations. And our local one is uh, Oak Grove Community Council. And every month, uh, in addition to talking about things that are going on in, in the area and what we hope to, to achieve, there's a, uh, a, a land use application process. So anybody who files a land use application with the county uh, has to in a, it go through us too. So we get a copy of that and so we you, you get a heads up. Then. We do. We get a heads up and we get to tell the county how we feel about it. Do we want that or do we want some modification or whatnot? So we heard about this new store coming in uh, through the land use application process. The community voted twice now to oppose uh, the Walmart going into G.I. Joe's You basically store. had a neighborhood association meetings and took we a vote. We had two big meetings. We had a special meeting just on that store, and we had a regular meeting with our uh, uh, people. We had about 80 people at that special meeting. It was a lot That's of people, a lot of people there. Yeah. Yeah. And really um, uh, so uh, what we understand is that because these are smaller stores than the big lots, those big stores that they were putting in before, it's easier for them to slip through the legalities. So in this case, they have the permit from the county. They also have the permit from ODOT because 
uh, McLaughlin is an ODOT road. It's not a mm -hmm. county road. Did they it's get a that state road. Did they get that permit before or after you found out about it? They got that beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we knew nothing about it. Yeah. Stealth. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. So um, the reason that the, the, the community, th there were a number of reasons why the community voted against it, but the primary reason, and I'll just say a little bit about this and then I'll pass this, the baton on to you, Tom, but, but we have, um, for the last three years, the uh, community, uh, the Oak Grove community and the Jennings Lodge community and the folks who live up on the Oakfield Ridge have been meeting for about three years and we've put together what we call a map plan, a McLaughlin area plan. And it, it includes the values and the guiding principles that we want to see as we try and revitalize this whole area. It's a lot of strip malls, a lot of car dealerships. Um, I don't know if you've been out there lately, oh, but it's out. visually pretty. Looks like Beaverton, looks like Gresham. Oh God, 82nd mm -hmm. Avenue, it's, yeah. just, you know, it's awful. So we have now a vision for how we would like our community to look. It's very exciting, it's very cool. Walmart is not part of that vision, mm -hmm. uh, primarily because one of the guiding principles or the values that we have is to have local uh, uh, stores, local economy. We want to keep the money local. We don't want um, big corporations coming in and basically sucking our economy out. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the primary reason why the community voted against Walmart. There are other reasons, but that's mm -hmm. the primary reason. Well, all these reasons and a lot of what you talk about is on the website, nogwall.org, right? Yes. And we've got a graphic for that. They might have been putting it up. I don't know. But, okay. But uh, so you were passing the baton on to Tom now? Or? Well, just, um, just to say one one more thing. A bunch of us did get together. There's, we're a small group. We're about 12 to 15 people who meet regularly. Um, and thanks to Bob, he, he's come in and offered the help from the union. You've got to bring the unions in. That's right. right. And so we've been meeting regularly, and we have an organization <laughs> called Nogwall, <laughs> which is short That's for No we, Oak Grove Walmart. Right. We've got it up there now there along with go. the Making yeah. Change. Perfect. And, um, and so we're, we have some actions that, we've, that we're planning, and there's some things that we're hoping to do. So. All right. All right. Now, there are many good reasons for opposing a Walmart coming into your neighborhood, and <coughs> we'll talk about several of those tonight. Um, workers' rights, environmental quality, uh, preserving American jobs, uh, limiting the need for taxpayer-funded social services and, and, and welfare. But, but even if you, if you don't care about any of those issues individually, there's a good reason to be against a Walmart opening up in your neighborhood. And that is that the effect of a Walmart is to actually shrink the economy. Now, a lot of people have trouble wrapping their, their minds around that. They because, think, oh, there's wages, figure, there's money going right, in, it's going to enlarge any, any, yeah. any, any additional business means more economy. But study after study mm -hmm. has shown that <coughs> in the case of Walmart, it doesn't work that way that when a Walmart opens up in an area, go forward a couple of years, measure the total economic um, uh, functionality of, of that area, the amount of money that, that is spent, the amount of money that's earned, it goes down. Now, now how, how can that be? Yeah, well, the dynamics of that, are, uh, I really don't understand what it would be. Well, uh, as, I said, as I said, there there are several studies that have been done. Uh, let me just mention a couple a couple of them. Um, there was a Walmart that opened up on the west side of Chicago in 2006. Uh, a study done by Loyola University found that the cl there was about one quarter of the businesses within a one a four mile radius closed uh, within within two years. Uh, supermarkets are in particular uh, affected by this. Um, in another study, uh, total supermarket sales declined 10 to 40 percent. Uh, 
One study showed supermarkets within one mile of a new Walmart had a 25% chance of closing in the first year and a 40% mm. chance of closing mm. within two years. Uh, there's also a, a large study that was done um, for the uh, grocery industry in, in Southern California, and that was done, um, done by folks at the uh, University of California um, at Irvine and at L.A., and they found out that Walmarts in Southern California cost the, the economy of, so of Southern California $2.8 billion per year. That's a considerable amount of change. How do they cost, how do they, uh, so cost them that? How do they do that? That's a good question. Uh, number one is mm -hmm. they pay very low wages and few benefits. That means that workers have less to spend, and for the most part, people spend their money where they live. Uh, they limit the hours of workers to make sure that people don't get enough hours to be considered full-time and therefore don't qualify for benefits. If they did, they couldn't afford them. Uh, that's another, another issue we'll get into, yes. <laughs> they encourage their employees to seek government help because they realize that what they're paying people can't make ends meet. So they, so uh, I was talking with, with Bob earlier, and um, nationwide, you're talking about a billion dollars a year taxpayer subsidy to pay for social services and welfare that is required by people who work at Walmart. Mm -hmm. Just like food stamps, right? Food, mean, stamps among would, other food stamps would be one. Uh, healthcare, subsidized health care would be another. Emergency healthcare room care. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, subsidized uh, uh, rents would be another. Um, they s squeeze suppliers uh, always for lower, lower costs. Uh, one thing that this does <laughs> is it decreases the quality of the merchandise that they, that they sell. And um, uh, We'll also get into that later. So you always get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very often you do, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, they provide almost all the services required by a Walmart store by, by in-house corporate services. That means that a Walmart in a neighborhood will do very little business with service providers from that area. Uh, Just the they, opposite of something like Burgerville. Just the opposite. Even you know, even even uh, uh, Fred Meyer, which is part of a large corporation, still does uh, contracts for a lot of local services. So there's mm -hmm. uh, is opportunity for local business to get to get some work, much less with Walmart. And uh, of course, we talked about them about other businesses closing down. So what you have is you have businesses with better paying jobs uh, going out of business, replaced by Walmart, which mm -hmm. which pays bad wages. And the overall uh, impact has been measured over and over again to actually decrease the amount of, of economic um, uh, movement in, in the neighborhood. So therefore, we can say without exaggerating that an empty building is better for a neighborhood than a Walmart. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another, just a small piece of context. So, for the in terms of the neighborhood, there's a Safeway store directly across the street um, from that uh, location where Walmart is going in, and it's an anchor store for a, a small strip mall. So there's a whole bunch of little businesses, and then there's a Safeway in the middle. The Safeway is. Um, mm -hmm not a, a robust business in a, at the moment, but it will certainly uh, go under uh, with, with the Walmart across the street. There's no question in mm. my mind about that. And then you'll see, I think, a lot of those other little stores are going to go down, yeah. too. You've, you've probably heard Good about Good example, that. the domino effect of Exactly. That. We, we also have one other little, little story that, to tell you. We have a, one of the people that works with us, Chips, is from Oklahoma, and he was telling us that um, in Oklahoma City, I think it is, mm -hmm. he said that um, Walmart grocery stores started coming in, and he went back, I don't know, half a decade later, and they have a Walmart every four miles, and every single alternative grocery store in the area is gone. So it's, think of it as an invasive weed 
Mm. You know, if you think in terms of comparison. like yeah. watersheds, you know, <laughs> it's like the blackberries. You know, they mm. come in and nothing else lives there. And so it's 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 like um, it's like that. You know, they they've they've taken over. Mm. You know the uh, the grocery store business for that entire city. So we can talk some more about what's planned here and for our region because, yeah. you know, we we believe that there's a plan to invade mm -hmm. uh, this region as well. It's that's a serious thing because they're hooked up with Monsanto and the whole genetically modified food trip, and um, you know you put those two together, and this is not. This is serious. This is a, ser this is a, is a serious thing. There's a lot of long-term consequences. There's some very long-term consequences, and it's hard to get that across easily to people mm. who don't right. know. Right, sure. Well, you before know. we move on to Bob and talk a little bit about the union, the thing that you were talking about, we have a graphic that I made up. It's entitled Studies on Walmart. I believe I made that one up. If we can get that up, uh, we can. Uh, folks can also go and, and look this up. It's at a website, ilsr.org. And uh, there we go. It's a long one, but we have longer ones, so we put that one up. <laughs> and hopefully uh, folks can get that written down and, and uh, follow up and, and go into more detail of what the, Tom, the good information Tom has given us. And so, so Bob, you, uh, you're you with the, uh, the union? That's a food union? Right. I'm an organizer with United Food and Commercial Workers Local 555. And we represent, we're a nationwide union of almost a million and a half, I believe. And we represent people from poultry plants to grocery stores, anything to do with food. Here in the state of Oregon, we represent 19,000 people, 12,000 of whom are in the grocery industry, uh, Safeway, Albertsons. Is that restaurants too? Uh, no, that would be the hotel and restaurant oh, workers okay. union, mostly like foster farms, chicken preparation, mm. grocery stores, etc. And um, aside from the fact that our employees, our workers, our union members, live in the community and uh, suffer the effects that Tom and Susan were talking about, they have one of the most powerful things that a working person can have is the right to negotiate as a group with your employer about your wages and your working conditions. And, and not the, just be an at-will employee. What the, what the governor of Wisconsin is, is, is taking yes, away from his people yes, back there. Yes, Scott Walker. In fact, our whole crew is back in Wisconsin right. going door to door to turn out the vote. to All um, for the recall. Yes, exactly. Right. Excellent. That's one of the most powerful things that a working person can have. And when they don't have that in our country in a right to work state or overseas, that's why Walmart goes to Bangladesh where they murder trade unions because the ability to get textile products out of Bangladesh and other third world countries where there's a dictatorship or something and no union and no rights is they can make huge profits, right? But our direct interest would be that this undercuts wages and benefits for union workers. The average wage for one of our um, members in Safeway Albertsons or Fred Meyer is about $12 an hour with an easier qualification formula for health care. Um, the average wage for a Walmart employee is eight dollars and eighty-one cents an hour. It's with basically a, minimum wage. Yeah, pretty much uh, hard to move up the ladder, etc. And it undercuts twelve thousand of your fellow neighbors and citizens who are going to go to the negotiation table and say, "Hey, we'd like a fifty-cent raise, or to drop our health care, or whatever they're working on." But I think fundamentally, it's uh, one of the best human rights a person can have is the right to negotiate with your employer as a group and get a contract. Mm -hmm. The whole economy operates on contracts. Walmart has contracts with everyone. The city has contracts with people that do the work. Workers have the right to have a contract and Walmart workers don't have that. Walmart is tremendously anti-union. They fire people right and left for trying to form a union. They've actually closed stores when workers try to form a union That's right. That's rather right. than, than do that. In fact, they wow. just met with some of the, the making change at Walmart is the campaign that United Food and Commercial Workers has going and we're also pointing out to the community there's two sides to it. We have a community campaign where we point out that Walmart is a predatory corporation as Tom and Susan have talked about. They take more than they give and also that um, there's another part called Our Walmart, where the Walmart Associates, you notice they don't even call them workers anymore. They're associates, right? Mm, right. like in a law firm or something. Walmart workers are organizing, and the, they just had a delegation of workers that met with some of the top CEOs at Walmart. They promised to respect workers' rights, not to violate workers' rights by the National Labor Relations Board. And just the other day, many of these people were fired for union organizing. Mm -hmm. So they don't live up to their so-called corporate principles. But one of the most important things I think I'd like to get across is 12,000 of our fellow citizens 
will soon be at the negotiation table about 7,000 the end of July and some after that to try to negotiate a living wage and affordable health care. Walmart workers do not have the right to do that and when a Walmart comes into town it undercuts that bargaining. So why would Safeway want to give anybody a raise when across the street they're making minimum wage and they're taking the Safeway business? Yeah. Plus it could cost us, cost our members up to maybe 1,000 or 2,000 jobs is what we estimate. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really serious. Uh, Walmart's basically a predatory corporation that mm -hmm. is kind of the poster child for what the I think what the country is going through right now is realizing corporations don't solve social problems. They make a profit and they'll do anything to do that. And they move and we on. have to monitor them and control them somehow. And union people having a union in the hospital, the factory, or the grocery store, they can have some power to monitor the corporation's behavior and get a fair shake. You know, we're talking food, but it occurs to me that uh, you were saying that there's also pharmacies. There, yeah. So yeah. you wouldn't, your union wouldn't be covering that. But are you familiar with any of the dynamics? They have pharmacies and Fred Meyer's and Safeways and stuff. So right, they would dry that up too. Would dry so, that up. And how about the yeah. workers there? I mean, they're they're a little higher level of worker. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be a pharmacist and all that. And, and do you know anything about it? How it would affect the uh, oh, the unions? I know it'll drive business to Walmart if then and if the prices so that would are, affect the union. and that you lose pharmacy jobs. And speaking of Walmart's violation of labor law too, Walmart had just has to pay recently there's an article here in the labor press where Walmart has to pay five million in back wages for workers that weren't paid for overtime. That's in the United States. So they violate law, labor law here in the United States, not to mention, as you probably know, the Mexico bribery scandal, which just broke, yeah, yeah. where Walmart executives were caught giving $25 million in bribes in Mexico to get their stores placed quickly and in the proper places. And when the Walmart executives found out about it, they hushed it up and covered it up until the lid blew open. And today, I believe it's today, the Walmart um, stockholders meeting is taking place. And there's a stockholder advisory group that is not a rebel group, it's a stockholder, please run the company correctly group, is advising to get rid of the top three O's because of this criminal behavior. That's yeah. that's top three of the, of the... The Walmart executives, the stockholder advisory group is urging... The, the whole country or the whole world or however. Yeah, urging the stockholders to vote these guys out of office due to the bribery scandal and the violations right. of labor law. Not to mention that one of the biggest pension funds in the world, ABP, out of the Netherlands, that's been working with Walmart for about 10 years to try to get them to treat workers fair, try to get them to not violate labor law, last month just said, we're done, we're not going to invest in Walmart anymore. You people just cannot stop violating labor law or workers' rights. We're finished. We're divesting millions, if not billions, from Walmart. So they're well. not... Um, the they Walton family can kick in some with spare change from, <laughs> from their billions. Maybe buy a few less paintings and yeah, um, yeah, 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 something yeah. like that. Now, this, this Mexican uh, bribery scandal uh, uh, brings up an important point, and that is that Walmart uh, has been trying to polish their their image through public relations, mm -hmm. and they've made a lot of promises over the years about about uh, uh, changing their behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, Buying organic. But this yeah. this shows the Mexican bribery scandal shows that you can't trust what they say. It wasn't more than, than a few years ago when there was a, a similar scandal. Uh, I believe it was in, in, uh, in Western Europe someplace. Um, a Walmart sent a, an, an investigator, someone who worked for them. Uh, the person uh, investigated found that yes, we're, we're, the company's doing things that are wrong. Uh, Walmart fired him. Uh, <laughs> They said at that point they, they were going to change their behavior. Well, as we can see with the recent news out of Mexico, they have not changed their behavior. So they're talking about treating their workers well. They're talking about uh, more environmental uh, responsibility. Uh, they're talking about a lot of things that, that people have complained about. But what we see is it's it's all PR. They're not changing mm -hmm. their behavior because because they can make mm -hmm. more profit by using bribery, by treating their workers poorly, by abusing the environment, and by uh, running local people uh, and existing businesses out of business. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just the way they are. I've seen this time and time again where, the, where concerned citizens will come to a government agency or to a large corporation and tell them what the problems are, 
and all that happens is the government agency or the or the corporation will take that language and flip it around, distill it, and throw it back out there and uh -huh. not do anything, uh -huh. which is exactly what Walmart. Well, you know, they're getting we, to be an expert at this. We've got <laughs> a um, we have a, a, a small problem in in the Oak Grove area it, because of that. Uh, there are I've talked to a lot of people now about this, and there's some really good people who live in Oak Grove. I mean, we're talking smart, caring, involved, educated folks who have bought the greenwashing in particular mm -hmm. of Walmart. They haven't been paying a particular attention to it and they, they believe it. And so when I say to them environmentally, these people are, the Walmart stores are terrible. You know, they say, oh, no, they're going to buy organic now. And, you know, <laughs> they, they're sustainably running their businesses, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, the, the, it, it's, it's difficult to talk to some of these folks to know how to change, change their minds or at least get them to e even consider it. There's some other really fine people in Oak Grove who have said to me, well, We've got a lot of people in Oak Grove who um, don't have any jobs at all. And so from their perspective, uh, having a minimum wage job is better than having no yeah. job at all. That you hear that a lot. Yeah. We do hear that a lot. and Well, I have. And, and then the other thing I hear is people are hungry. Uh, they don't have enough to eat, and they need uh, a, a cheap source of food in order to survive, as I've heard that. A bunch too. One in five uh, children, I think, are in poverty in this country, something like that. Well, it, Oak Grove is an odd community. I mean, we've got a, a spectrum of, of economic reality, but there, there are, there's people hurting there. And, um, you know, there's a, I mean, just for example, they're going to put some trees in their parking lot where there's no trees at all right now. And people are going, yay, trees, you know, <laughs> we want more trees. And so how could you be against this? You know, there's going to be a business in that empty store and they're going to put trees in their parking lot. Lipstick on a pig comes to there, mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. So in a sense, you know, those of us who are trying to organize around this, I mean, those are some of the issues that we're trying to grapple with and be able to speak clearly um, uh, to in ways that people can understand. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily easy to, to do that. Um, right. And, and we're hoping that, uh, of course, we're, we're concerned about Oak Grove, our neighborhood, but we're hoping that people in other neighborhoods in the, in the Portland metro area will organize around this and maybe we can prevent what Susan was talking about happened in Oklahoma City, yeah, where you right. you end up with Walmarts every four yeah, miles and every other grocery store goes yeah. out of business. Uh, Bob can tell us more about about uh, Walmart's plans for the mm -hmm. for the metro area. The other fifteen, I think. Yeah, there's yeah. actually a total of seventeen. But I just wanted to add first that um, Susan makes a really good point because my frustration with American citizens are they kind of don't look behind the curtain to see <laughs> what the motive is. And you may go to Walmart, and yes, the macaroni and cheese might be a dime cheaper or the TV or whatever, but your taxes are paying for the workers' health care. Here in Oregon, Walmart employees receive the most food assistance and health care from the state of Oregon, paid for by Oregon taxpayers, than any other workers in the state. So you don't see it maybe because it's hidden in your taxes at the end of the year, but that macaroni or that TV is not cheap. You're paying for mm. So we're subsidizing with Oregon taxpayers' dollars, my mother's and sister's tax dollars are subsidizing the biggest retail corporate predatory corporation in the world, which is insane. It shouldn't, <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, it really is. And Do you uh, have any idea what kind of uh, taxes is that uh, Walmart pays itself? Because a lot of these places get real, real uh, breaks on their taxes. They do. Yeah. I had a sheet on that. They do. A, here's one on the taxpayers. They do a lot of scamming about trying to figure out ways to not pay their taxes. And I'm no economist or tax expert, but I've got a sheet here that explains all kinds of stuff about it. Uh, like here, here's one point. In New York State, for example, at least eight Walmart locations have challenged their property tax assessment and recouped almost $800,000. So if they're such a good corporate citizen, why don't they you know, pony up and mm -hmm. pay their fair share of taxes? I do. I can't scam my taxes and, and not pay on my salary. Mm -hmm. But to get back to the places where Walmart is... Um, 
Oh, right. Coming in. I've started to call it a Walmart invasion, which I think it is. Well, that's and a, that's a, even for an area this big, 17 is a yeah. lot of stores. So and that includes Vancouver. Right. But still, yeah. I, that's yeah. part of our area, though. That's true. It's because there's a river in between. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think it's a quality of life issue. I think actually that's why the Occupy movement and everything is bursting forth in this country. It's what kind of jobs are we going to have? Are there going to be mick jobs that are minimum wage with no health care and no union and no rights? Or are there going to be sustainable jobs? I think people are starting to learn that the salmon are connected to the water, are connected to the shade from the tree, and the farmers run off. We're kind of understanding as a society that that needs to be sustainable or we're not going to make it as a planet or a state. Mm -hmm. The economy is the same way, I think. I've started to talk, about, talk yeah. about this with our union members to get the concept into their head that you have to have enough money to live because if you don't have the money to have a living wage or if you don't get a living wage, you can't give your daughter violin lessons or buy her a computer or send her to nursing school and your life has to be sustainable so I think the Occupy movement and this whole thing of questioning Walmart as the poster child for a predatory corporation is what we need to be doing it's not just Walmart but they're one of the most egregious you know crazed violators mm -hmm. the locations are um, 17 total in the Walmart uh, in the Walmart, almost it is going to be the Walmart metro area I guess <laughs> in the Portland Vancouver metro area there's Two, what I call slip-ins, where Susan and Tom were saying there's, they're buying an old grocery store, downsized to about 45,000 feet, where I believe the big box mega stores were like 180 or 170,000. There's a few of those around. And there are land parcels. So yeah. there's two land parcels in Vancouver that they want to build mega stores on. And I believe there are already two Walmarts in Vancouver. And there's two slip-ins stores that used to be a, a food for less like or something. Like the G.I. Joe's. Like yeah. the G.I. Joe problem yeah. they have. So there's four in Walmart, four in uh, Vancouver. There's a whole bunch of them in Beaverton and in uh, all around Portland, Oak Grove, Tigard, um, Vancouver, Gresham, West Lynn, Lake Grove, Raleigh Hills. So there's 13 slip-in stores in Portland Metro Vancouver and four land parcels. A big land parcel in Oregon City, a big land parcel in Tigard, and a bit two big land parcels in Vancouver. Now that one in Tigard, I just saw uh, an article. Did you? I think you sent that to me. There is a couple there who are protesting the Tigard store, and they're trying to organize uh, in their community in opposition mm -hmm. to that store too. So next time yeah. we, if we come back, we may bring them with mm -hmm. us. <laughs> and the reason this program is so good is that I think people are having trouble dealing with the new strategy of Walmart doing these slip-ins. Yeah. They realized yeah. that when they build a mega store, they become the poster child for opposition on environmental traffic, etc. So now they're coming in with grocery. So my question would be not only from all the stuff we've discussed, but how many Walmarts do we need? Do we need yeah. 17 mm -hmm. more Walmarts? Do we need 34 more Walmarts? What if we need, do we, are they going to put in 80 Walmart? I mean, it's becomes, yeah. Yeah. it becomes almost insane. But the end result of dominant competition is no competition. And that's, and that's where the Oklahoma City yeah. um, story comes in, in my mind. It's like, well, are they planning that everywhere? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, you know, you were, you were likening them to a, to a weed that comes in. But to me, they're more like a, a high end of the food chain predator yeah. that comes in and, yeah. and, and <laughs> eats everything. So there's nothing yeah. left. Yeah. And then what they can do, eat each other, and then what happens? So retail, all, all retail those, shark. Right, and all them jobs <laughs> will be gone, and they yeah. won't come back. And then these things go out, there won't be many people to move in. And, then, and uh, another yeah. great point to me that you folks have been making is this whole move towards genetic engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, they may say they're going to buy organic, and they may have their little organic part, like Fred Myers does. But, but uh, genetic engineering to me is is uh, is one of the most dangerous roads we're traveling down, mm -hmm. specifically because the government isn't forcing them to check to test it much. It's mm -hmm. almost rubber stamping it, as far mm -hmm. as I know. Or mm -hmm. label. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And another thing, uh, you were mentioning the, uh, I think it was Tom was mentioning the fact that that uh, they're not going to be buying these things local. Well, isn't that going to bump up the carbon footprint? Because they're having to yes. drive these things in with diesels or whatever mm -hmm. from other mm -hmm. uh, other areas. Who knows? Maybe other countries as well. And so the, the carbon footprint's going to be much big, bigger yeah. as well. Right, exactly. They're creating jobs, but they're in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So you were talking about, uh, we're working on this around here, but is your union also active oh, in other parts of the country? Yes, thank you, good point. Um, there, as you had on the website, there's a, 
a campaign started by UFCW some years ago, years ago called Making Change at Walmart. There's the our, our Walmart side is the workers organizing a union and trying to fight for their rights and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And there's the Making Change at Walmart part, which is the... We have a graphic for that, too. Yes, so. exactly. There's a website. People can go to um, where is, uh, www.changewalmart.org. And there's all kinds of resources there, the stuff that we've talked about. And uh, I believe there's people at the shareholder conference today from that group. And we have a great campaign in many big cities around the country, like Chicago. Uh, part of the solution is to build enough popular uh, understanding and rebellion against Walmart or to hold them accountable to sign a community benefits agreement. Right? Like, like Susan said, a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their head around, well, you can't stop them, they're not doing anything thing illegal, but what kind of corporate citizen are they going to be? So in Chicago, there was enough of a community fight back that they formed, um, they got the company to sign a community benefits agreement. And I haven't seen a copy of it yet, but it could be yeah. things like maybe reimbursing the state for the health care that Walmart employees get, mm -hmm. maybe putting a park in down the street, maybe... Um, putting more traffic lights and hiring crossing guards yeah. if there's a school close by. So there's a crossing guards there wherever the children are about to help them get across. So trying to be more of a responsible That's corporate a citizen. Idea. You know, and uh, hmm. it is difficult because their strategy constantly changes. They're the most powerful, biggest retailer in the world. But also, um, if you don't start a fight back or some kind of movement to hold them accountable, you know, all these things we're talking about are just going to increase. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a national campaign from United Food and Commercial Workers, and I urge people to check out the website. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of Walmart workers are trying to organize a union and mm -hmm. get the company to abide mm -hmm. by federal labor law, which doesn't sound like too much to ask, does it? Mm -hmm. no, no, not <laughs> at all. Yeah. None of the, uh, the strategies that Walmart uses uh, by itself is, is unique. Um, uh, large corporations, have always tried to push down wages. They've always opposed uh, organization of workers. Uh, they, we've been seeing jobs shipped out of this country uh, by by industry for at least 30 years now. We've been legislated out of this country uh, by our Congress. What, what Walmart has done is that they've taken all these techniques to the extreme because mm, they're good point. they're bigger mm. and they're more voracious. In, in outsourcing, more voracious in fighting against workers' rights, more voracious in, in keeping wages down, uh, more voracious in going after local governments for, for sweetheart deals that, that keep their costs down. So this is a good, it's a good point of, of, of attack if you're concerned about what this, this uh, 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 corporate culture and, and the um, globalization of the economy has has done to our nation. Uh, this is a good point to, to put your foot down and say, no, we've got to change this. It starts here, because Walmart is the worst, mm -hmm. the biggest and the worst. It seems to me that uh, they've hit on a really good uh, strategy to do this, and is is. As I think you mentioned in a phone conversation, they pretty much got in before people knew anything about this, and so this is may not be a done deal but it's it's, it's further down the road no, than we want it to it's, be it's a done deal we have a we have a, a this plan is the oak grove one. we have a plan in oak grove to um prevent them from actually opening the store um what if you go on our website which is um www.nogwal n-o-g-w-a-l which is short for no oak grove walmart uh there's a you'll see dot, dot org Oh, dot or o -R -G, mm -hmm. right, thank you. We have a pledge sheet that you can sign by uh, a click. I saw that. And there. the pledge is something that like, um, I pledge to uh, not shop at the Oak Grove Walmart. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we thought if we could get, you know, several thousand people to sign that pledge, that it might at least dawn on them that this store is probably not a good idea. We're also going to have lawn signs to you know, uh, for people who are willing to have a lawn sign in their yard. Raise the visibility. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If people, should, people actually should, should check out the website, uh, uh, nagwall.org. Um, you can sign the pledge, which, which is really important. Uh, there's a lot of information there, uh, the, the things that we're talking about tonight, resources about uh, Walmart's corporate culture and, and, and how they treat their workers, etc. Um, there's an opportunity to um, volunteer if you'd, if you'd like to 
to collect signatures yourself mm -hmm. or, or, or get involved, write letters to the editor. We, we need all the help that we can get for sure. Right. And, uh, and this information will also be applicable to the rest of the metro area who is, is facing the same um, yeah. invasion by, by right. these Walmarts. Right. If, if yeah. I could interrupt, that's a good point because the United Food and Commercial Workers wants to work with local committees or neighborhoods that are alarmed about this or help create one. So we also have resources to bring to bear uh, members that could you know, uh, possibly uh, work door to door distributing leaflets or something. We have some computer folks that can help and stuff like that. So if I might give out my phone number, if there's a Walmart coming to your neighborhood soon, which there mm -hmm. probably is, you <laughs> could call United Food and Commercial Workers or myself, Bob Marshall, at 503-701-2636. Why don't you repeat it? 503-701-2636. Also, I think... Let me make 503 701, 701. 2636. Now that is that is to your union. That's my cell phone. Oh, it's your cell phone. Because I'm the organizer who's working on Walmart for United Food and Commercial Workers, and I can bring some resources to bear to help neighborhood committees or maybe help create one, you know. Another thing I think we'd like to do when I, this is like citywide, is maybe hold a community hearing about what it means for Walmart to come to Portland and get some uh, quality people to be on a panel. Like, Jobs with Justice is very big in this town. I've been a member for many years, and they have what's called a Workers' Rights Board. Mm -hmm. I think maybe through the Workers' Rights Board or separately through some other community, um, just having a community hearing about what does this mean? And people can come and testify pro or con. Walmart can come, and we can sort it out publicly rather than have a developer come to town, not say who they're fronting for, and buy the property, and go to the city council and mm -hmm. slip it in, and mm -hmm. boom, bam, hey, we got a Walmart, kids. Let's have a public discussion about this. That's why this program is so wonderful. We've stopped so, a lot of them in Cedar yeah. Hills, and I don't know, number three of them at least in this area. Gresham. The okay. Selwood, Gresham. there was gonna be yeah. one, of, but those were those, that, the one in right, Selwood but, was but a big box. But it shows that people can, can organize and, right. and mm -hmm. do this. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was thinking while you, while you were talking about that pledge that, you know, it may not, they may not pay a lot of attention to it. It may hurt, it may hurt their bottom line a little bit, but, it, but I think the main fact of that pledge was they would be aware that there's a lot of people out there that not only do they realize that there's a curtain, but they realize that there's somebody behind it now. And they're, 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 when people start getting educated, that's probably as scary or more scary than, than exactly. losing a few bucks. Yeah. Right. And so when people get onto this pledge, you know, all over the, all over the city and in Vancouver, and then they'll, they'll realize huh. that people are paying attention to all these different things that are going on in the background. And, uh, and that, that is, is, to me, probably the most dangerous part of this. What and a cool knowledge idea. is power. Yeah. That's right. You know, and uh, you shine a light on them, and they're going to have to change their, their, uh, their strategies. This is what brought them to this in the first place, because they were being shut down all that's over the country. Right. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if they're shooting them down in other, other countries, but they are around here. Speaking of other countries, I believe the United States is the only country in the world where Walmart is non-union. That's not to say that every Walmart in Argentina or Sweden or everywhere is, wall is union. But we are union free as far as Walmart goes because of the labor laws being weak and Walmart being so powerful. Mm. Um, that's an interesting point. This is the this is their bastion, you know, where they have the most power. I guess. Same thing with genetic engineering. Most yeah. a lot of countries won't have anything to do with yeah. it. That's yeah, right. They got full sway that's in this right. country. It's you know, I'm not that's surprised those two were marrying up, marrying up together. The thing about Walmart and the and the. Um, uh, Monsanto GMO food is that they have actually flat out refused to sell food to label the food that they sell that's genetically altered. Mm -hmm. um, there are stores in the Portland area who sell it, but they have agreed to have their uh, products labeled. So you can choose, you know, whether you want to mm -hmm. participate in that or not. But Walmart has said flat out that they're not going <laughs> to label that food. Well, they know people won't want it. So, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of my biggest gripes about Walmart, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked a lot about how Walmart is, is bad for our community, is bad for workers. Uh, fact is, they're also pretty lousy grocery stores. <laughs> All right. Bottom uh, line uh, here, sounds <laughs> like to me. Consumer Reports, mm -hmm. uh, in their May issue, did a report on uh, supermarkets around the country. Huh. Uh, it included more than, than 50 supermarket chains. And, some of uh, which aren't even around here. Some sure. of which are not around here. Yeah. And uh, uh, right down at the bottom, there's only one below them, and one that, that we don't have around here, is, uh, is Walmart. Uh, they 
They and talked about some of the problems. Why is that? Yeah. Well, they talked about some of the problems that people run into in supermarkets, and uh, they came up with with ten headings, and in seven of these uh, ten, Walmart is the bottom. Wow. Uh, uh, number of, wow. number of open checkouts. Loser Walmart. Knowledgeable staff. Loser Walmart. Visible price labels. Yes, loser yes. Walmart. Store layout, wow. loser, Walmart. Fresh produce, loser, Walmart. Hey, for a grocery store, that's a killer. <laughs> yeah, with Check it. out speed, loser, Walmart. Wow. Those are all bottom lines. I mean, so, what are some of the ones that they didn't lose at? Uh, they, they didn't lose at parking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why we don't They've like them. They've got trees yeah. in their There's parking lot. Traffic. You know, they're traffic. green now. And, 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 yeah. they're, and they're, they're, they're uh, <laughs> wow. Well, there were no losers in the baked goods. They don't have the worst baked goods, it seems. Um, so there are there is something to be paid for those low prices. You know, you're getting bad service. You're getting, in some case, inferior product. Um, and of course, as Bob said, you're also going to pay more taxes mm -hmm. to support the workers that Walmart does not support. As Walmart tries to scam on the taxes, they do pay. Right. So they're uh -huh. rapacious and they're predatory. Uh -huh. and, and you're supporting them uh, oppressing workers in other countries. To the well, point where the that. oppression may yeah. not be the right word, but they're they're keeping their wages way down. Well, it's actually, in a form of oppression, oppression is exactly the right word. It is exactly the right word, brother, because in Bangladesh about a month ago, oh, yeah. the, the uh. main textile worker organizer who was repeatedly arrested and beaten up by the police, et cetera, et cetera, in Bangladesh is where Ralph Lauren and Walmart, and I'm not saying Walmart is complicit in murder. I'm not saying that. I'm saying they go to where the water seeks the lowest level. They're in Bangladesh because it's... a, a you know, a country that doesn't have any labor rights and workers are oppressed. These um, workers were organizing in the textile industry for many years, and the main leader was just tortured and murdered and dumped in an alley. Good and they, he'd been arrested and, and beaten many times by the police. Mm -hmm. That's why those companies are in those countries, because workers are really beaten down, literally, uh, and oppressed. So uh. from the third world to your neighborhood, Walmart is not a good corporate citizen, mm -hmm. is the way I feel about it. Right. Well, you know, we've got like 11 or 12 minutes. If folks want to open up the phones and field some phone calls. Talk to you with sure. me. All right. Sure. Yeah, we got. We can. Uh, if anybody wants to ask questions, please call up. Maybe you might have some comments. Maybe you like Walmart. A lot of people do. Uh, I've actually been in there a few times myself over the years. But uh, the only time I'll go in there is if I'm somewhere else. And then you know, well, if they have it, no one else does. That's what competition's all about, right? And. Uh, the, well, the fact that it may not last very long, that's something you got to factor no, into it don't, as well. Don't, don't, don't forget, though, these are grocery stores, so you're not going to get a TV right, there. with this particular yeah. thing. Yeah. Except for the mega box ones, the four big land parcels, those will be mega stores. Right, and the, the all these are going in along along with the existing Walmarts. They're not closing any Walmarts. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no. no. The other thing to think about with Oak Grove, the Oak Grove Walmart on, on 99E is, is the location. There are people who are saying to us, um, will we know if there's a phone call? Yeah, it's coming up. We're going ahead. Okay. We'll, we'll get there, to it. There's people who say, well, you know, the, the Walmart store is, is, is not, we don't have anything about Walmart. We don't have anything against Walmart because they don't know what we've been talking about. But this location is wrong. And the reason the location is wrong is because they're they will become directly adjacent to an elementary school. And the traffic mm. already coming down the side street into McLaughlin, into 99E, is a, is a cr there's a school zone, and then there's two strip malls coming together, and there's traffic coming both ways that go into this street before you even get to McLaughlin. Right. It's going to be a so mess. That, that sounds like a bad one. We've got two calls already, okay, so we'll good. get the first call. Go. First caller, All you're right. on the air. Okay. I All right. Me. Hey, you're real clear. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I just wanted to ask, I know you're zeroing in on Walmart, but do you have any statistics about Safeway and Trader Joe? And is there a, a better uh, supermarket that you would recommend vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rights of workers? Thanks a lot. Good question. Tom, that, or Bob? I would say go to a union store, which is an Albertsons, a Fred Meyer, or a Safeway. And I agree with the fact that they're all corporations and they think like corporations, but in those stores, workers have the right to organize, to negotiate a contract, to not be fired for union activity, 
to not be, you know, mm -hmm. like you get a ver if you have messed up and done something wrong, you get a verbal warning, verbal warning, a suspension, and then a termination. The average wage in the union store is twelve dollars an hour. A non-union uh, Walmart store is eight eighty-one. So I'd say go to Safeway, uh, Fred Meyer, or Albertsons and mm -hmm. support the union workers. And like you mentioned, Trader Joe's, Wild Oats. Uh, mm -hmm. New seasons. Hello. Sometimes those are a little more yeah. spendy, but I think we have a, we still have two calls. We'll get the next caller. Hello, next caller. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the program. Hello? You have a comment or question? Hello. Comment. Uh, comment or Am question? Am I on the air? Yes, you are on the air. <laughs> okay. Do you have a comment or question? We don't have a whole lot of time here. Yes, if you, if anybody is interested in the impact that um, that Walmart has on an Oregon community, they should look at Hermiston, Oregon. Hmm. A Walmart opened there, and virtually all the small stores closed, including See. the grocery stores, yeah. yes. the hardware stores, the stationery stores, and it's really hard on the elderly. My parents were there, and the only store they had available to them is the Walmart. Oh, yeah. And I don't think you've mentioned that, but Hermes is a great example of the impact that it has had on the local economy. All right, well, thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. Good examples are really important. Yeah. You know, we can talk yeah. about all these, but you know, we can point to a town and say that it happened here, you know, at a certain time and a certain place. Right. That's very important. That's really good to know. I'm mm -hmm. glad she called in. I yeah. think we have another call. Next caller, you're on the air. Yeah, great show again, Jim. Thanks hey. a lot for the uh, thanks a lot for the uh, topic. All right. Uh, very proud to say I have never set foot on Walmart property. <laughs> and, uh, Good you for know, you. <laughs> Three cheers. To go to my grave Put me to with shame. that, uh, <laughs> with that uh, vow. Uh, so anyway, uh, if your guests could maybe uh, address the traffic of Walmart uh, uh, deliveries. Um, to these smaller stores. I know that out here in Gresham, we uh, fought hard to defeat the uh, superstore that was going to be, uh, that was planned to be built out on Powell Boulevard. And it also, if maybe your guests could address the, uh, not only the yes, tax, uh, uh, oh. the taxes that Walmart refuses or uh, skates out of, uh, gets out of paying, but the, uh, the subsidies involved with uh, installing a new Walmart, such as, uh, uh, the tax breaks they get for the property, the tax breaks they get for the uh, road upgrades, the uh, improvements, the traffic, and all that stuff that the city uh, bends over and uh, allows Walmart to uh, um, uh, the uh, make, the, make the city pay for that. Okay. And uh, thanks again. All right, well, thank you very much. Can you address any well, of that? Walmart, uh, as a corporation, is very aggressive in, in going after every break they can they can get whether it's a subsidy a tax tax break uh, 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 tax cuts uh, it's going to vary by uh, ju by jurisdiction what you know what mm -hmm. uh, local governments now I've talked to several um, people in local government uh, in this area and in general they're not very positive about Walmart uh, the problem comes in Walmart's got really good lobbyists they've got really good attorneys and uh, they'll find a way to wring every dollar they can out of us. Come in at the state level, maybe not even at the local that, level. That happen if, if they if they can get it done at a higher level, they'll do it that way. Mm -hmm. Sure. Here's sure. a good point on. I just have this sheet from the website we have making change at Walmart. A study by the organization Smart Growth revealed that big box stores only contribute slightly more in taxes than single family homes. Single family homes generate roughly $8,200 per year and big box stores generate about $150 to $200 more. This is not my opinion. It's a uh, Connor and Connor and Doherty big box stores don't produce tax gains. Wall Street Journal blog uh, July 14, 2010. Mm -hmm. So they only produce about $200 more a year in taxes than a single family home, which is ridiculous. That's a couple years old and it's, yeah. I'm sure it hasn't changed much. It's probably yeah. worse. Yeah. Probably worse. Probably not we got one more call. We'll get the next caller up. Next caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, next caller. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Welcome to the program. Hello, yes. Yes. Uh, well, yes, I'm putting on mute. Uh, oh. You are a breath of fresh air. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. I did not know that your organization was even around because what I have seen <coughs> is 
people kind of pour it, the few things, and I have been a non-Walmart, anti-Walmart for over 20 years, for so finally this is happening and finally people are waking up. And there was just a couple of things I wanted to state, that the corn for Walmart is GMO. As of about two months ago, it was in the paper. Uh huh. The, corn, the yeah. uh, county commissioners <coughs> have given the impression that they are okaying this Walmart. Yes. And I did not know that because I did not find anything fighting Walmart until I turned you on tonight. Well, and I, I can't thank you four people enough. Which and neighborhood? I which neighborhood? IPad. Susan, you're on my iPad, <laughs> oh. and I have your number, Bob. And I will be contacting you. Please do. Like as much Please do. Information the, out there. There are many people I'm like us, but we can't board. seem to get the info. Now I can't hear you, so I got you on mute. Uh, <laughs> one more thing. Two more things. Uh, Twenty-five thousand dollars was donated to some organization in Oak Grove, and there was an, uh, uh, a thank you letter put into the Clackamas yes. Review, glorifying Walmart. Oh, for yeah, a lousy yeah, yeah. twenty-five thousand dollar donation yeah. to this little organization, <laughs> and then the other thing is Carlotta Colette nixed the one that they were going to put on Tacoma mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and she fought that she did not want Walmart mm -hmm. to be on Tacoma. That was that big box the mill there. Yeah. Now, is she nixed that? Why is she saying okay to the one on McLaughlin? Well, Metro, I am really upset and about all of this and I just thank you so much and I'll listen Can to you Can I now. answer that? Thank you. I will sure. be notifying you by the way. All right. Take it off of mute. We're down to a couple minutes here. Okay, so. so Metro has nothing to do with this and Carlotta is now working for Metro. She doesn't work for the city of Milwaukee. So the Board of County Commissioners are not happy in general over this, but there's nothing they can do legally. It's not like it's out of their purview. Then it, it, it's in their purview, but there's nothing they can do because Walmart has followed all the laws. So it's not like they can just um, arbitrarily say, "Well, we're not going to follow the laws either. We don't want you here." They can't do that because then they're just going to have a lawsuit on their hands. So yeah, it's it's not that the board of county commissioners are. Um, wanting Walmart on McLaughlin. They, they don't necessarily. It depends on who you talk to, but they, uh, you know, I've talked to them. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, and there is no city. We don't have a city. So. Yeah. It's right. clear. This is a We're situation, down to about a minute. This is so. a situation where the people have to lead. We do. If, if we yeah. don't want a Walmart in Oak Grove or people in Beaverton don't want a Walmart in Beaverton, they're going to have to take into their own hands. Right. They're going to have to let Walmart and their elected officials know we don't want the Walmart. Uh, I invite people to go to uh, www.nogwall.org, sign our pledge. If other people want to start organizations in their neighborhood, we're more than happy wow. to, to give them the material from right. our website to, mm -hmm. to use. Uh, we can do it if we try. If we stick together. Wish we had some more time, Bob. Let you. Do some more, but we're down to about less than 30 seconds. How about giving out the phone number one more time? Okay, quick. quick. <laughs> United Food and Commercial Workers is fighting Walmart tooth and nail. Yes. My name is Bob Marshall. Call me. I'll help. 503-701-2636. All right. That gives thank me you, good. brother, for having us on. All right. Hey, well, welcome. You, you did a great job. want to thank the crew. We're running out of time. Tune in next week. Yeah. <laughs>